Hi, welcome back and thanks for joining me. Today we're going to be designing this Your Home sign to hang in the showroom in Ohio. And we're going to be using our easel software and taking full advantage of the tiling feature as well as the large bed and capacity of the Silverback 6060. To start, I'm going to open a new workpiece and we'll start this design from scratch. In this previous section of the workpiece, I set it up for a 24 inch by 48 inch piece of Baltic birch plywood. So we're going to set our material the same here 24 inch by 48 inch by three quarters of an inch thick. Now I set my thickness just a little extra deep to make sure that if there's any parts like the outline that I need to cut all the way through, that I'll be able to make it all the way through the design. In the design space, we're going to go ahead and add a rectangle to give us the size that we need. And you can see here when you click on the rectangle tool, instead of stretching it out to try and figure out an arbitrary distance, you can instead select size and we're going to type in our width of, uh, let's say 18 inches and our height is going to be 48 inches. Now, if you right click on it, or I'm sorry, if you left click on it, select it, click edit, center on material, it'll drop it right in the center of our currently selected material. Now, I have saved on my computer an SVG file of the Your Home logo. If you want to do this with any other logo, you'll have to either get an SVG file or import it in a different manner. Uh, in this case, I'm just going to show you how to bring in that SVG file. So I'm going to go import SVG. And I'll search my downloads. And we have your home logo. Open it up and you can see down here, it appeared down in the bottom corner. Now, some first steps here, I'm going to group these uh, best that I can, uh, make sure they stay together. Since they're all individual, they like to move around. Uh, I don't think that combine is gonna do what we want it to do in this instance. Nope, it did. All right, so now we have it combined. It's all one, one piece. Now we're going to uh, change the the angle of it, we're going to rotate it 90 degrees so that it can fit long ways in our uh, in our field here. Oh, I'm moving stuff I don't want to. And what we're going to do is we'll set the width somewhere close to that 18 inches and see how big this gets. So I'm going to start 16 inches. Oops, sorry. It is not liking that because it's oriented the wrong way. So back that off. 16 inches here. And then we'll go 40 inches in this direction. Actually, you know what? I'm going gonna, gonna to back both of those changes out and I'm going to make sure that we lock down the aspect ratio here. So I'm going to change this height now to 16, and you can see it gets way, way too big. So we'll bring this down to 12 inches. Still a little big. Inches, still too big. Eight. It looks pretty good. So now I'm going to go to edit, center on material. And that brings us right to the center of our background. <clears throat> All right, now this layer in particular, we're going to set to be a cut depth of, of zero inches. I want the your home to stand out at the top and not have any depth to it whatsoever. So the surface of the plywood will be the surface of the your home. Now I'm going to use one of our apps by going to the Apple 
or I'm sorry, if I go to the Lego from our design library, but our app store, our app library, and I'm going to go to the offset setter. This one right here, I'll click off, offset. And I'm going to go, I want to go a little bit further than a quarter of an inch. So I'm going to go uh, point, let's do a half inch, 0.5. You can see here it has offset all of our things outward by 0.5 inches. We'll import that. Leave it the original size. And now what we can do here is, is grab our logo, pull it out. Oops, I'm sorry. We're going to have to delete out some of these portions here. So uh, all the portions that remain that that are supposed to be, or that are in this, we want to remove. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna clean this up. I'm going to select my your home logo, undo the move on it, select our asset, go down to offset again. Set this to 0.5 inches. You select the keep original and import it. The original size. Now I'm going to try to combine this. All right, so see how it took out these center portions, made it all one big piece. Keep clicking on the wrong thing here. It uh, keeps tricking me. All right, center that on the material. So now you can see that I have an outline around the your home. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go to cut, and I'm going to change this to a clear pocket, and I'm going to set it to something fairly shallow. Uh, let's say 0.15 in inches. Then I'm going to send it backwards so that the weight is showing above it. Now we have this gray is getting cut at 0.15 inches deep. This Your Home logo on top is not getting cut at all. And then we have our background here that's getting cut at 0.3 inches. Now I want to have a border around this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create um, a second of this background. So we're going to do Control C. B. Now I have a second version of that background. I'm going to change my cut to cut inside shape path. Set it to zero. And now I'm going to set this I'll center the material. And actually, I'm going to change that. Have it set to cut inside the shape path. I'm going to set it to cut on the shape path. Uh, let's see here. Let's set this one, center on material. There we go. So now, if we zoom in, we can see that we have this cut happening. Now, this cut here is. Uh, actually, I want to change this. I want to set it all the way th through. Go all the way through it. Oops, I'm sorry, I have the wrong thing selected. There we go. Now we're set, set to cut that way through. Good, so that's going to cut that out. Perfect. Now we're going to shrink this down a little bit here. So this shape we're going to make, uh, let's see, we'll, we'll reduce it by a half inch on each side. So one full inch, so we'll say 17 inches, and that should have reduced. Oh, I didn't have this lock selected, so make sure we set the, select this lock, um, and that'll make sure that it 
changes both portions of the aspect. 17 inches, good. Edit, center on material, that gives us a half inch on the top and bottom, a little bit more on the outside. Uh, so, so we actually need to, hmm, let's see, unlock this. I'm gonna set this to four, five inches even. That way it'll give us our full half inch. Set on material. Oh, you know, we were at 48 inches. So I'm actually gonna bring this down. This one's at 48. So this one's gonna be 46 inches. And, and center it on the material. Perfect. Now we're gonna duplicate this. Center it on the material, change its cut. To a pocket, make it zero, send it backwards, all right. So now what we have is an outline that's going to get cut all the way through, and I'm actually going to adjust some of these tabs here, see how the tab showed up on the corner. I, I don't like that easel assumes that I want things on the corner. Uh, it's a lot harder to clear a, a tab that's on the corner than it is to uh, cut one off a flat straight surface. All right, so, so now I have a cut through. I have no cut occurring here. Here I have a depth of 0.3. I have a depth of 0.15 for the surround of the logo, and then I have nothing for the logo itself. So once I get all of this cut, then we'll be able to paint different layers of this in different colors so that it'll all stand out really nicely. Now for our actual cuts, we want to make sure that we have the right details here and that we're inclusive of all of the portions we cut. So we're going to go ahead and, and look at our detailed view to see what this quarter inch bit, what this quarter inch bit followed up by a one eighth inch bit will be able to accomplish. So we click detailed view. Now we're gonna click uncut areas because I wanna see what's not been cut. And we see here, it's just some small portions of these finer radius and they're not going to really affect the way that this look, looks when it comes off the machine. So I'm going to leave that. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to look at my cut settings and I'm going to make sure that I'm happy with all the settings here. So for the roughing pass, uh, we'll go, now I'm running the Makita router, so don't use these settings in particular. Uh, there'll be much more conservative settings set um, when you load up your machine. But I'm going to start with 200 inches a minute, 50 inch per minute plunge, and then I'm going to go pretty conservative uh, depth per pass here. So I'm going to do 0 0.075. Um, I will ramp in. And then for our detailed pass, we'll go 80 inches a minute, 40 inch plunge. Um, I'm fine with that depth per pass. And we'll do, we'll do the offset. Um, and again, a plunge. So let's see with those changes, what our simulation says. So this is for this first tile here. It says 43 minutes to do our rastering cut with our quarter inch and to clear out everything. And then another 20 minutes with our eighth inch bit to lock everything in and get nice and trimmed up. And that's pretty reasonable. Uh, if I rush this too much, it's going to take not a whole lot less time, but not come out with as nice of a, a cut. So I, I really like this timing. I think this is going to be a nice step over. I think this is going to give some good detail here and I'll be able to sand out any lines that I get. Now to see what the next tile will do, we're going to go into our material. 
and select tile two. Now for tile two, we'll click simulate. And we have about an hour to cut the second section. And then we'll check on tile three and click simulate. All right, so about three hours total time roughing and about an hour and a half total time detailing, which really is not bad at all. So we're going to fly with that. And the next step here will be getting our material ready to go and getting it on the CNC. So I will meet you in the garage and we will get rolling. Hi and welcome back to Ingrain Woodworks. Today we're going to be working on a sign for the showroom in Ohio for Yora Home. So we're going to be making this sign here. We designed it earlier on in the video. Uh, today we're going to be carving it out. So we have a sign that is approximately 18 inches wide by 46 inches long. So I have a piece of material on the bed of the CNC that is uh, 20 inches wide to give us a little bit of extra room by 48 inches long. I want to make sure that I have plenty of room to be able to cut this out without any risk of running out of material. Now you'll notice that on the left hand side of my machine here I've added a fence and that is because we're going to be using the tiling feature in easel. Now this fence is going to help me because I can take a mark and set it right at the very end of this material and then as we move on to the second tile I can simply slide the next mark which will be 17 inches away or 18 inches, whatever number it's selected in there. We can slide that down to the mark where this one started off and we have a perfect measurement. We also know that we're staying in line with our Y axis because I took the time to set the bit against this and then slide all the way back to the back and set the bit against it again. Now that allows it to be perfectly parallel with our Y axis. So that should give us some nice clean straight lines without a lot of touch up sanding to do in between. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started. I'm gonna make a mark so that I know where I'm starting at here. And then I'm going to get this all ready to carve. Uh, we're using a spiral down cut bit, this MDF phrase a lot. I know it does create a little bit of extra heat uh, in the bit, but I'd really like to use that down cut bit because I wanna minimize the amount of sanding that I have to do for post-processing. Now we're gonna take all these passes and then the sign will get painted in multiple colors which is gonna give us a really cool look. And uh, I'll throw some uh, pictures up in the video of kind of the look that we're trying to achieve here. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started here. First thing, a really sharp pencil, whether it's a mechanical pencil or a mechanical pencil with wide lead like this is important. Make sure that you have a nice solid tip on there so that you can get a nice clean line because the more accurate we can be, the less overwork we're gonna to have to do. So I'm going to go ahead and make my faint line at the beginning here and then I'll grab my square so that I can get a nice clean line. So I'm going to put this up against the material here and then mark up the piece of 2x2 two two. and that gives us a nice clean line right here. So now that we've had that have that marked um, I can go ahead and set my zero location. And once I set this, this will be set for all of the tiles. I'll use the same zero position for all of them. So I'm going to move my machine down. I'll jog it over to get us started. All right, so I'm happy with that as our zero position. Like I said, the sign's a total of 46 inches long, and that 46 is to the outside of the... Um, the cutout that's going to make the final rectangle of the sign. So I'm less than an inch back from the front here, uh, and then I'm uh, maybe a, I don't know, an eighth inch, yeah, about an eighth inch in from the fence that I created. Now, as we slide down, we're still going to move the distance from this line. 
So there's no, even though we're off a little bit from that perfect corner, there's not really any adjustment to make for it. We're still going to uh, slide forward by whatever the predetermined amount is. And in this case, for this particular wood, it's, or for this particular carve, um, it'll have us move, I think, 17 inches forward because we're gonna start with 16 inches of cutting and then we're going to move forward um, either 16 or 17 inches and then it'll actually cut back on because I have overlap selected. So it's gonna actually recut part of the previous tile and that just allows us to get uh, nice clean edges and transitions between tiles. So it's not a hard break and we don't have as much uh, fine measuring to do. Um, so that'll help us out in the end. So I have that set where I want it. Um, now I do have to change something. If you notice, we talked about three quarters of an inch of plywood in the previous video or in the earlier portion of this video. We talked about three quarter inch material. I actually ended up with something a little bit smaller. I only had some half inch. I'm having a hard time finding three quarter inch material where I'm at. So I'm gonna make this out of half inch MDF. Um, it'll paint up really nice and give us a nice smooth finish. Uh, and, and it's right at a half inch, so I'm pretty happy with, with going to, uh, say, 0.52 for our thickness. Um, and that'll ensure that we cut all the way through. Um, even if we go through that two hundredths of an inch, it's not going to affect our spoil board a whole lot. So we're going to do 0.52 inches thick. Uh, on here we have our width set. It, it doesn't matter what that is because it's all all relative to what we're doing here. Uh, the very corner of my piece is set to start one inch in from the end uh, and then flush with the base, which in this case, this is our zero point. So it'll, it'll move right along this zero point here and it starts in one inch from where that bit's set. So no risk of hitting the screws there. Um, no risk of coming off of the machine or hitting the limit this way. So we're good there. Um, now we could select, if we wanted to do uh, more tiles, we could select more individual tiles, uh, but three is what it set it up at to give us approximately a 16 to 18 inch tile. So we're gonna use those measurements and we're ready to carve. So I'm gonna go ahead and click carve. We're gonna confirm that our material is aligned and it's telling us to align this to our zero point up at the front of the fence. So we confirmed that, we confirmed our thickness. We have secured this down. Now I just use screws. Sometimes screws are just the easiest, most secure fastener to use. So I ran screws outside of the cut area so that we could make sure they're away from where we're gonna be cutting, but also have a, a nice secure workpiece. Uh, we're gonna be cutting our roughing pass first using our quarter inch down cut. So we're going to click continue there. And then we're going to click confirm bit size. And then I'm going to use manual since I already have my, uh, my router in place where I want it to be at. I'm going to use new position. And then we can select to raise the bit. Um, now I'm going to be using a dust shoe uh, with the router, and this is the first time using it. This is the Yora Home Dust Shoe, um, and I'm really excited to get this to give this a try. So I'm going to throw this on, and then we'll be good to go. So I'm going to actually move the spindle out and up so I can get this on. And we should be good to go here. So I attach the dust shoe, turn on the spindle, spindle's on, and we'll hit carb. Now, if it goes somewhere wonky, uh, I'm going to, to stop it and restart real quick. Uh, I'm keeping an eye on it. Sometimes if you move off of the zero point after it's raised a bit, it gets, it gets weird. Um, hopefully that doesn't happen, but if it does, just be ready to hover over that stop button to get it stopped so you can make the adjustment and, and come back to what you're doing.
All right, so the first section of our carve is done. And with some light hand sanding, all of the little fuzzies from this upcut eighth inch bit will come right off of here. Um, I do have some light striation from the, uh, the bit. It, it's not a tramming issue because you can't feel it, but it does leave those little lines. Um, they sand off really easy, so no worries there. So this will clean up really well once I'm done cutting all this out. Now it's time to move the workpiece forward so that we can align everything for the next cut. So the first thing I've done, I've moved the, uh, the gantry back and I'm actually going to have to move it back a little bit further to be able to get to the back screw that I put in place. So I'll move it over. And over this way. Um, and now I'm going to loosen my screws. Actually, you know what? I'm going to, before I loosen my screws, I'm going to see how far we need to move and mark that. Um, so I'm going to select in easel tile two just by clicking the check mark. And then when I click carve, even though I'm not going to carve yet, it tells me I need to go 15 inches forward. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my little square and a tape measure and a pencil. And from the front of the workpiece, I'm going to measure back 15 inches. And this overlaps by one inch so that it'll uh, recarve a portion of what was carved before. Since we carved 16 inches of it, it's going to recarve that portion. And it just helps everything to kind of line up um, and, and be, um, I guess, just a, a little bit more accurate in that way. All right. Make sure everything's lined up here. Perfect. Now I can remove my screws. In the front two, I'm gonna take all the way out. The back two, I'm just gonna take out enough that it'll slide forward. Um, no need to take them all the way out. I'm gonna use them to secure the front of the workpiece. So now we slide forward and our mark on the workpiece gets aligned with the mark that I made on my little fence. So I slide that forward, get it lined up, make sure that I'm pushed against the fence, and then I can run my screw back down, pulling it down nice and tight to the bed. Good. And then these other two screws I can run in back here further. So that looks good. I've got everything secured down again. I've got my, my work piece moved forward. So now I'm going to um, change out the bit. Actually, you know what I'm gonna do is I'm going to cheat a little bit to get it to go back to the original home location instead of having to move it up and over and trying to figure that out. So that there's a cheater way to do this. So, We'll say that we're doing the detail pass. We want to do that to make sure that we're not going to um, that we're not going to screw anything up. We'll leave the bit sizes as they are. We'll say use the last position for our zero, and then we'll work through the settings as usual. But the caveat here is when I click carve, once it starts running the program, I'm going to cancel it before it actually starts to carve so that it'll go to its home location. So you see it just started to carve just a tiny bit. It doesn't matter because it's going to end up carving that anyhow once the detail passes up. So now I can raise up my bit and I'm already in the XY zero. Uh, so now I can raise up the bit, change out for the quarter inch, reset the bit down in there, 
uh, for the Z height and then carve that deep, or that uh, roughing pass. And this is just a little trick with um, with easel. It, it, you can do it differently in some of the other uh, GRBL programs, but in easel, this seems to be one of the easier ways to trick the machine or trick the program. Really, the machine doesn't know anything. The program's telling it where to go. All right, let's get this off there. All right, change out my collet insert and bit. to get the dust shoe in there first, just from a clearance standpoint. So let me put my dust shoe in place, drop my bit through the insert. Just makes it easier rather than having to fiddle with it after it's uh, installed here. And then remember with these Makita routers, if you switch out for the router as your um, as your spindle, that we never want to tighten down the collet using the red button. The red button is there just to help you hand tighten everything. Always use two wrenches and you won't have any issues. If not, pretty good chance that that bottom portion of the router will snap off it happens to a lot of people in a lot of the different brands that use the Makita router. All right, and we are perfect. So now I'm going to get ready to carve. So I'll confirm that we moved our material 15 inches forward. The material thickness is the same. Uh, our material is secure. We're going to do the roughing pass, quarter inch bit, manual, and then I'm going to click use new position so that it saves this Z position. It already is in the proper X and Y position. Now we can do raise bit. Our dust shoes attached, spindles on. And I'll click carve again and turn on the vacuum and move you all in.